Welcome back, everyone, to what is probably the last episode of us playing as the Realm of Kiri. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. But we gotta talk about farewell to the commons. None suffer the consequences of national decisions more than most minute and disconnected citizens. A crowd of peasants had assembled on the piece of communal farmland, and the eyes of the law and the state planners dare like land unlawfully occupied by squatters, and at any rate not exempt from the exercise of the government's powers of eminent domain, slated to be redeveloped by the decree of the realm. Development Planning Commission, no doubt such a scene was being repeated across the Kirin countryside, but the scuffing and shoving between the protesters and the police had quickly wrapping up to be the most volatile. An attempt by a squad of officers to subdue a particularly belligerent squatter instead saw them being surrounded and beaten by other peasant protesters, who in turn were kept by additional officers coming to aid their aid uh, to the colleagues. As canes and rattan shields were distributed to police to enable them uh, to disperse an increasingly rowdy crowd with force, the enraged peasants uh, responded by pelting the police ranks with rocks and bricks. The protest soon turned into a village-wide riot with conflagration sparked by a myriad of naira transformation causing severe damage to state and private property alike. The unrest was only subdued with the arrival of several fire engines from a nearby town. With police and fire Kieran turned to their fire hoses on burning buildings, angry Nairic and ang riding villagers alike. <coughs> a commission uh, for mayor was killed in the fire uh, in the fire eating by a rock to the head. Sixteen arrests were made for a few nights afterwards. Police patrolled the village lanes and outskirts, watched suddenly, sullenly from doorways and windows by bruised and battered villagers, while the commission's bulldozers moved into the little farmland. The old must make way for the new. But we do have a cup of coffee to keep it nice and warm. And what do we got? In Rhapsody of No Morality. And they have led by the Right Alliance, Daily Supremacy Support. Um, so, Right Alliance efficiency goes up. I don't mind the efficiency. Efficiency for efficiency. Very cool. Of course, we have no fuel up. We should probably get some more fuel done. Cool. And. We're coming along with this land action pretty darn nicely. Because right now we are doing the Realms of Resources. resources which I think we read last time. So we're going to this, please, great head. Because we've got quite a few more folks to do as well right now. <coughs> uh, long range battleship holes. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Passive pants is good. Left behind snipers. Even if our enemies manage to penetrate into our lands, we can use small marksmen brigades. Left behind the enemy lines on the occupied territories. This would ensure that they... Enemy can't hold on to the occupied land so easily and show the conquered king that there is still some hope. The establishment of Conrad. Much to the dismay of many of the corporations that follow a fickle current in the diaspora at home after the end of the silence, hopes for a Kiri aligned with free market capitalism are now thoroughly dashed. The uh, Morning Secretary's ambitious plans for ongoing modernization and expansion of the Kiri economy and military were deemed too important to rely on any foreign entanglements instead. Kalan National, the rising Homegrown star of the Kieran economy has been co given a controversial grant of autonomy to ensure autarky and self sufficiency in Kiria. The Kalan National Resource Allocation Division seems par public, part public private partnership, part state owned corporation, and part central planning committee. The new Conrad Board of Directors reflects its eclectic makeup government ministers, elected delegates, appointed technocrats, and of course, Kalan National's own executives form a group of strange bedfellows to be leading the economic development of Kiria. In a joint press conference between the government and Conrad, KNCEO Midnight Moon seemed almost giddy. I'm proud that the government has entrusted this important duty to Cala National, like we would for any client. We promise we're all nothing less than the best. I can guarantee that over the next few years, Conrad will be responsible for tens of thousands of new jobs and millions of tons of affordable raw materials for a growing economy. And the money that these jobs and materials create will be invested right here at home. Here's another decade of growth and carry up. At least Cala and Sheridan to deliver the goods. More than can be said for the rest of the role. Ah, so increases the maximum output of resources that can be produced by civilian factors so that are fighting simultaneously by one. Sure. Cool. Oh, oh that's sad. I see. So there's this one. Cowell and Nash was tasked with enacting the Realm and Harmony Party's pledge to ensure Kieran and resource autarchy in the near future so as to protect the sovereignty of Kieran's industrial growth from the vague areas of the global resource market and to hedge Kieran production against possible disruptions or supply chains by war crisis or geopolitical entry. To this end, Cowell and Nash has been granted sweeping powers of command and control over Kieran industry, an unprecedented level of authority over the Realm's economy by anomaly private sector corporation to make even the most influential skyfall in trading house or Madriporian parastatal envious. So we do this, what happens? You can only have four resources produced by civilian factories or synthetic refineries simultaneously. When selected, you get plus one to uh, oil with civilian factories, which reduces our consumer goods by 6%, which is not good, but that's quite interesting. I, I don't mind that, probably, actually. Because right now we are hurting for fuel, which we could build up some more uh, refineries here, which would be pretty nice. 
Which right now we aren't. We're still in more economy too, huh? Interesting. The Providence Rangers. The rugged terrain in Northern Kyria, west of Fragrance, gives rise to especially hardy Kyria. Greeting local companies, the Rangers familiar with the terrain would improve the defenses of the Hindian frontier and help further integrate the Northern Kyrian or Kyrian with the rest of the realm. Nice. That'd be great. Oopsie. Between Skyfall, Region Y, what is this? Sorgma Steel Mills, eh? Should probably use. The Hells of Peace and ooh, uh, Plenty possess a high quality of iron ores. With the help of the Sorgum Foundry, the state of Kira can invest in the creation of steel mills and sorghum while providing ease of access to these ores for the Foundry and other potentially, uh, potential smiths companies. Sure, why not? What do we got here? Sure, why not? And I read this last time too, so you're going to read about this one. Please go ahead. But then, Guardians of Zebraka. As a vast emerging harmonic hegemon in Zebraka, Kira has a moral responsibility to uphold and protect harmony against those who would seek to destroy it. Zebraka is a divided place full of rival ideologies and powers, and we don't have the luxury of ignoring the world beyond our borders. The science is over and Kira is part of our world and thus must play an active part in shaping it. Such a defender of harmony decision mechanic allows us to dismantle or demand disarmament from warmongering, expansions and otherwise unharmonic countries in Zebraka. If they refuse, we may choose a launch of military invention against them. Proportional Warfare Doctrine. Ooh, public cost. Goes down. Experience Soldiers Lost is good. I like that. New foci. Ooh. What is this? The Citification Commission. The rapid urbanization of Kira's settlements is not restricted to the big cities, but innumerable smaller towns and villages as well. The Citification Commission will oversee and regulate these radically transformative processes, ensure that they should happen in a sustainable and equitable way, and then Kira would slip through the cracks as Kira shapes and redefines itself at breakneck pace. What is one first? Advanced catapults. Get some cruisers going. What do we got here? Nice. Feels coming along. King of Winged Body is dead. As he should be. Why not? Spread the love. Just a little bit. Not too much love, though. We got these guys going. It's so not bad. These more military factories. More steel and tungsten as well. Because right now we are on free trade. Uh, on free trade. Uh, what do you expect? And the resource extraction, of course. Why not? Ooh, look at that. Chromium, huh? Sunshine headlines, chromium deposits, periodities, uh, periodites, founded by the coastal cliffs of the Sunshine headlands, show promising signs of widespread chromite presence. Taking a clear look into this may turn our advanced blueprints of future contraptions, machines into reality. Ah, okay, plan clearance, yes, please. We're doing that somewhere else, I thought, as well. Jade expanse, crystal fields. And curious for this region reaches, I lay rows upon rows of rolling hills and smaller mounds were in hide pockets of magic crystals. Well, the Kirin that called the Jade Expanse home have glinned the Expanse's crystal since the world's creation, bringing industrial forces to bear with greatly richer value. Interesting. See, this one is still 6%. Modify oil output. Because we're actually doing okay on oil for now. And I'm going to give you more. More oil, more fuel, more resources. That's looking better a little bit already, but we're still turning away a lot of our stuff. Mirren Factory. The temperate local climate of Verno Glade and proximity to existing transport and logistics uh, infrastructure makes it an ideal location for the construction of a modern processing plant producing mirin. A rice wine weekly, widely using gear and cooking. The laws of war. Mascot may be more famed for its parade around the grounds and scholarship, but of course, officers need less marching and more theoretical instruction. Today's lesson for the cadet class of 1017 focuses on the application of historic equestrian theory to modernize Kieran doctrine and geopolitics. Circus Pernzi. Pansy was an accomplished statesman whose role in the founding of Equestria is known, less known as his career as a military theorist, and in many ways one of the first philosophers of the conduct of war. The instructor in the front of the classroom looked over out over a uniformed class of cadets. He did the best look unassuming, but someone had to be the victim. Cadet Glistering, I imagine you of all Kieran did the reading, and what is a central tenet of the Circus Pansy's thought? 
A cadet stood from his desk and saluted. Sir Pansy wrote up the need of our harmonic nation to fight in accordance with the principles of harmony, ma'am. She identified five guiding principles for the ethical conduct of a harmonic war, ma'am. Military necess necessity of violence, distinction of combatants and non-combatants, proportionality of civilian harm to military necessity, prevention of unnecessary suffering, and the honorable professional conduct of the soldiery. The instructor nodded, correct, cadet, sit down. These are the principles Pansy identified as key to the ethical conduct of war. But can anyone answer what principle Pansy identified as key to the ethical in initiation of our harmonic war? The classical sign and then the hoop shot in the air. Pansy's proportionality principle of warfare is next. Nice. Man, go the genie discernment. Go the genie aggression's gone too far. The visions are a threat to harmony. And the responsibility to rein them in is to safeguard peace and liberty in Zebrica. There's about three of our four criteria to mili justify military intervention against them. Interesting. Pansy's proportionality principle of warfare. The instructor leveled her stern gaze at the hoof being raised near the back. Yes, Cadet Winter Green. Winter Green stood up and cleared throughout. Sarah's Pansy wrote that the proportionality principle of ethical conduct and war can also be reversed. If military necessity can justify a degree of harm to citizens, then ongoing harm to civilians also justifies the degree of military necessity to end them in harm. If a nation's government is causing substantial harm to civilians and non combatants through its policy or campaign, a military response may be justified. Pansy made sure and made clear that this justification will extend to the gravest of offenses against harmony, such as mass violation of the basic natural rights of an entire population of creatures. Under such circumstances, pacifism becomes unharmonic. The only acceptable course of action is an ethical, harmonic war to end the abuses. The instructor nodded and impressed. And Becca for one agreed and said, Yes, you won't hear about that in any question in military college, but it's central to Pansy's thinking, as much as any other principles are. I'll not need to spell it out to you that you're an increasingly capable harmonic nation as ourselves, and with the state of Zebrical being that it is with which it is, the possibility is not entirely distant uh, that you might find yourself asked to take up arms on that same justification. Neutrality in the face of injustice is the side of the oppressor. There you go, there you go, nice. Oops. Fine. Whatever. So then what? Kieran Evolutionary Core. Huh. Ah, oh, what do we got? The Sassy Venture, which we will do eventually, but what is this all about? Interesting, interesting. Zebridian naval bases. Wazoo. Huh. Realm. We Zuli, huh? The Board of Elections. The creation of a special Board of Elections with exclusive responsibility of overseeing the almost continuous Kirin election seasons on a national, provincial, municipal, and local level. Which are the Kirin democratic processes, practices, and norms are protected and upheld to the highest standard. As it should be. That's way too ahead of time. Um, what else can we do here? That one, that one's hydrophones are good too, but we can't put that on those guys. Uh, naval support. Anything else down here? It's fine. So, what type of ship can we build? Fortress. Because I do like building ships, actually. Ship building is actually one of my favorite things about. Uh, this. Oh, we have no radar. That's not good. That's actually really bad. Battleship Armor 3. Battle Cruiser. Battle Ship. I want better anti air as well before we do anything else. It's too expensive. Just give, give us a couple days. Honestly, remove this then. That'll be fine. Looking better already, nice. And the Board of Elections. What was this? A promote urban growth and fragrance. That's political power. Oh, that's nice. Well, why not? Urban growth, urban growth, urban growth, urban growth. Hey, this we got something to use our political power for. That's nice. I'd like to do that, but we can wait. I'd like to be able to go to war with these guys, India, but. Probably not going to happen. But in the meantime, minor civic duties. Uh, let's see. So, who are these people? Wazuli.
Interesting. So get four a day, which is not enough. That's never enough for me, of course. But, you know, it's just me. It was Equestria's harmony that lifted the silence, and Equestria's harmony is under assault. The Matrix appeared herself as press the secretary for the decree that the realm will stand alongside Fluttershy and Applejack, our first and oldest friends. <clears throat> a dual track judiciary. We must moderate our passion for modernity with the due respect of curious old age traditions and institutions. There will be a phase and tradition of secular law, of courts operating on a legal system, mixing Equestria and common law with the Griffodian civil code. Draws before priestesses and magistrates under way of fire scripture will be retained and accorded equal and protected status. Nice, very nice. Um, I guess we have the basics there, that's good. Uh, anything about planes? Maybe torpedoes, maybe? Uh, gear technology, we still need to do as well. I don't know which one I did last time, though. Scaly armor, defense, all about infantry. Oh, research feature, why not? That seems like a good idea. Military factory, minor activities. Jasmine missed. And rolled an empty bamboo cup around her under hoof while her other hoof kept her tired head from falling down under the table. All sound all around her, rain poured from a depressingly gray sky. Not uncommon for this type of year, but it was more miserable to sit under this cramped pavilion. Even more miserable is listening to her appointed partner, Amarath, being so unbelievably chipper to every Kieran who stopped by. Hello there, sir. We're to vote today. Just need your name and your village, sir, he said cheerfully, and then nudged Jasmine as for effect. And don't mind Jasmine here, she's just grumpy because her mane is wet. Isn't that right, he said, and Jasmine rolled her eyes. You can vote in the booth, booth six, sir. Remember your ballot is secret. If any characters that try to intimidate you or try to see your ballot, let us know. We can ring the board of elections right away, she said, shrugging not, not sound extremely tired. It wasn't like Jasmine was hated being drawn for the local elections board, but did it have to be pouring? As the Kieran head at her table trotted off to go vote, she carefully peeled off an I voted stick it for him. Oh, cheer up, Jasmine. Amran said, it's civic duty, and every Kieran has been so friendly, Jasmine sighed, but nodded. I just wish I could have been friendly, you know, indoors. Unlike decisions to declare election season, which decreases the political power costs and prevents retirement mayoral actions by 80%. Oh my god, 80%? Wow. Oh well. What's this? Providence demands aluminum plants. A modern military force requires aircraft and other strange vehicles with themselves require strange materials and familiar ones that were hard to come by. So, we're better to house a significant part of the production process in one of most advanced provinces. Providence and his bustling capital of Rhapsody. Nice. That's good. Yeah, so it's out of time, so we're getting there. We get better anti-air. We can't do this one because we need better hydrophones. Oh god. <coughs> excuse you. Excuse you, excuse you, excuse you. Anything else really super important? Economic policy. Well, there you go. Yeah, that one. Improved NTR is good. Just keep improving it too. What do we got here? Uh, there you go. Anti air, anti air, more military factories would be kind of ideal. Of course, more steel would be ideal as well, but whatever. Cruiser hull is nice. Four. So, what do we got on you guys? Medium batteries, light cruiser auto loading. So, there's a difference between these two. Auto loading is not bad. But this gives you a light anti-air as well. 425. This is slightly cheaper to make, but it requires more steel, which we don't have. So we're going to go with steel. Because they're fours. Um, let's wait to put that one on there. Torpedo. Torpedo. Fire control, because I want you to have more than just that. Secondary batteries, because they're armor four. Rapid fire guns. Nope. Four. Yeah. Speed of ones. Well, depth charges twos. You know what we're gonna do? Let's save that design for now. And depth charges. Better depth charges. Sorry. And then I want to increase this size of this one. Urban Growth and Jubilee. Zebra can naval bases as well. The Zebrides are a critical who control the trade in the South Sea as our Phethysian colonizers recognize. As a preeminent regional trade power, we should extend the offer to assist in the island's development and secure our next to the critical sea lanes they guard. Which would be great. We need them later. Especially for the South Sea venture. Yeah, definitely need this one. God, 70 days. 70 days is so long. My god. 
group control systems. What else we got here? Heavy bomb locks, which I don't really use too much in all honesty. Here, cannons. I'm still not sure what the best aircraft to use is, but still, whatever. Uh, beat him up, beat him up. It's fine. Just beat him up harder. The Volitionaires Ardent. Equestria's great war is over, now our pony friends must recover from bitter fighting. That they suffered. Following an impassioned plea from Kirin and Premier, Autumn Blaze and Matriarch Spear Rainshine herself, the Mornin Secretary, has approved the deployment of several volunteer banners to her equestrian allies. The news reels offer full descriptions of the countryside devastated by conflict, and with everything from bridges to dams to homes and farms have been destroyed. Autumn's hoofpicked General Brightburn is select from dozens of banner commanders, gladly offering up their formations, and oversees the process of re equipping them with bulldozers, cranes, and capable layers, and places other tanks, artilleries, and machine guns. Thousands of banner gear with combat artifices and um, pioneers heavily overrepresented are making their way to Equestria to land a hoof, and shiploads of concrete, steel, and construction equipment are just being loaded in the harbor across the realm. The revolutionaries will likely just be dropped in the bucket compared to the vast task we're building in Equestria, but every drop counts. A friend in need, as they say. Nice. What else we got here? Naval stuff, military stuff. But let's just say we end up down here. You know, just saying. We got a lot of jungles down here. Hmm. Hmm. Asteria. I don't see any more resource stuff, so yeah. Chrysanthemum. Why not? <coughs> That'd be nice. You say you're training, but you're not really. Hydrophones are good. So now we need better radar, eh? That'd be smart to do. Piercing. Let's go with that one next. A dual truck judiciary. A charlatan spins heaven into ash for the masses, while the wretch's heart burns with neither smoke nor cinder. Huh. Let's get this one next to you. Rapsi is a city too enraptured by the sin of its own sacred incense to understand how stuffy the rest of the Kyria thinks it is. And my stereotype of Rapsi was confirmed when I found myself charged with ap apostasy on my first day in the city and sent a hearing before the newly empowered procurate. River Lily was with me the entire time, but faced no charges herself and seemed more furious than anything else, promising she'd bring my family down to the matter if she had to. I didn't want that. I don't like relying on my last name to get out of trouble, but I'm not above it. And the authorities not telling me anything about the charges, I had no idea what to expect. I was ordered to remain under house arrest at my hotel with Lily until my hearing, when the magistrate, a weary looking mayor named Luminous Flame, finally read the charges against me. For failing to anoint myself after passing under a sacred gate that I'd never heard of, I was being charged with the apostasy of the precepts of the way of fire and thrown with imprisonment and a vast fine. Luckily, however, Luminous Flame seemed to strongly disagree with the lawyer, and they insist on calling themselves jurics here, prosecuting me. She pointed out that a few, if any, of the thousands of Kieran who trod under the gate bothered to anoint themselves and asked that the city was full of treacherous apostates if they had not been all rounded up and brought to court. I had little familiarity with the procurate's arcane legal systems, but by the time she was finished arguing with the jurics, jurics they had their tails between their legs and I was only facing some obscure infraction. <clears throat> oh, with a fine of just two tails. When asked how I was to pay, she smiled and informed me that the court was awarding me a tail a day and a recompense for two days of unnecessary house arrest, and I walked away entirely free. I think some Kieran and Kit Raps had heard about my proposal in the Collegium and arranged me to cause me trouble if I ever came to the city. And I got their message. River Lily and I had been enjoying a relaxing week together on the beaches of Jubilee, away from the overzealous procurate. Still, I have to admire Luminous Flame. While I was awaiting my hearing, I saw her co hold court for four of the cases, and in each one she saw nothing wrong with interrupting, arguing with, and even outright shaming the juridics for, uh, Oh, various oversights and excessively zealous investigations. I doubt very much that she has a future higher in the ranks of the procurator if she would spend so much time annoying the legal community, but it's refreshing to see that someone, or sometimes the laws applied honestly, even to see such archaic and corrupt governance as Rhapsody. It's strange I always thought of the laws rigid and unbending, which is why I broke down so badly in the chaos before the silence. But here I saw the law bend and flow in the luminous flames hooves until it arrived at a nothing punishment befitting my non-crime, all while still finding me guilty to satisfy the technicalities of the situation. Maybe the law is a tool that produces the right results in the right hooves, and its letter is less important than its spirit. Even if Rhapsody's labyrinthian legal code can create justice, maybe the important thing is just that we believe that justice will come and work for it regardless of where we find ourselves. I find myself sipping on wine in a beach, snuggling with River Lily, and wondering if I ought to have more faith in my fellow Kieran. Well, maybe. 
100 beacons of chorus. Being secure in harmony at home is not enough when harmony is being threatened across the world. We will invite the harmonious nations of Zebrica to grant an alliance to join to stop the march of cruel tyranny. Let 100 shining beacons warn the enemies of peace that they will be met with sacred fire. A Kyrian flag is in the seas. The expanding flame of the influence of the Kyrian state has spread to the seas south of Zakiria, and now junks from the verdant and steamers from fragrance are a common sight throughout the brides as such. The Romans committed to a concerted investment in the archipelago's infrastructure and ports, the keys that unlock the riches of the South Sea, as one newspaper put it. The Romans' good relations with the Phasian South Sea Brides government made the proposal even more attractive. They would get local jobs, foreign capital, and a steady uh, stream of Kyrian sailors and spending their pay on shore, uh, as well as the security of the Kyrian anti piracy operations in their waters. Already full fledged policy white paper has found its way to Autumn Blaze's desk, detailing the benefits of a potential shared anchorage in Bicavia, that the authors are calling the Azure Tide Joy Naval. Installation. We're keeping the sea lanes safe, man. Yeah. What do we got here? Smoke and fire? Uh, sure. What do we got here? Engineering? Sure. I like initiative. Initiative's pretty good overall. There you go. Ever growth in sorghum? Yeah. And Verdant? Yes. Those are training? Sure. Honestly, with you, River Song, what is this? Marines actually have supply grades. I'm gonna make a couple more extra marine divisions if we have to. Improved depth charge is nice. There you go, we can do this one too. That's IT air. Check to our volunteers. Honestly, we're probably not going to use motorized. If anything, we could probably use these as armored cars. Faction at least two members. What is this? Inevolable sovereignty. Conquerors are empowered by the promise of easy conquest, but by exchanging protection to nations under threat from across Zebrica, we can make would be warlords think twice. Guarantee the independence of friendly countries. An active mutual defense to pact with friendly countries. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Saving modern artillery, nice. So we'll of time there. Um. Region wide. Yeah, we could use another military factory. Honestly, yes, we could. Full fuel is good too, but eventually we'll need more than just <laughs> one ship. One airplane catapults are good as well. Okay, on that stuff, I'm also do this here. Um, what are we lacking? Oh my god, we literally don't even have support for That is my bad. Post that, a multi-denominational confessional state, I think I read this before, but to overcome the schism of the way of fire between the path of rising sun and the circle of searing tendency, the government will remove all restrictions on dissident sects, such as the rising fire. Are we still not all brothers and sisters under Concord, regardless of the details? Of course. We take development, uh, advanced trucks, sure. Why not? Ooh, hard attack, piercing, soft stack, yeah, we'll go with that one. Good. With military police, because we could use that. We need a lot of that. And where are we at? Dockyards? Sure, why not? Are we ready yet for anything better? Secondary batteries, which is something updated, but whatever. Um, anti air? Yes. It's some some sort of radar. Level four is good. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So we'll start making this ship. This is a decent ship. It's not perfect by any means, but now we need some serious steel. These are holes. I'm 
Okay, four. I need sonar on this thing here. Twos are okay. Anti-sub stuff for now is fine. Lots of anti-sub stuff. Torpedoes are okay, not great. And... There you go. Task Force, equipment variants, destroyer. Service visibility, production cost goes way down. It's not bad. Heavy attack, HP, light air, light battery hit chance. Production cost, armor, I gotta go with that. All right, so at this point, we cannot do free trade anymore. Go export focus, gives us more resources. So we're back to where we were at earlier. Advanced set here is not bad too. That being said, we only have 1.24 million in reserve. It's not terrible. We're gonna need some air races too. They're maxed out up there. Get some down there. Over here, over here too. Just in case, pass the sonar, god dang it. Enemy agent turned, whatever. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Um, that stuff is fine. Could have used better torpedoes, but whatever. And resources still, man. And technology over here as well. Max factor is in a state. Max nutrition is speed. But power again. Guess monthly population is still good too. Yeah, the Mystics Magisterial. Ah, oh, this one the first time. Van Strux, nice. And. So, the economic community, huh? Come on, where are we at? Ah. Nice, there we go. Trucks, better trucks. Anything else? Really? No. Good. Better infantry weapons. Production need. There we go. Get that one. Um, plane wise, where are we at? Fighters, cast. We're not making a single thing of fighters or cast. Okay, that's not good. Yeah, we need like, more military factories. We need more political power, too. No. And then what? What decision do we unlock? Crank up onward. Nope. Nope. Foreign policy. Oh, guarantee independence. Card membership, huh? Guarantee Reichstag. Hello? Try it. Guarantee a lot of independence. Look, how one hyena. Sure. Uh, long ago, I, I wrote for the praising Concord for lifting the silence. Uh, do a little lesson the first time. Back then, we had much to prove. The conveniences of modernity lurked and sought to devour, armed to the teeth with lures and traps, which to spirit its way. I was skeptical of Autumn Blaze and his imperial premier. She had contend with me rising sun and fickle current among the other conflicting interests. And who was Autumn? A mayor from Asgard had dropped out of her temple studies, who then proceeded to critique the ongoing silence. A mayor's claim to fame was playing Vermilion tour guide to our two wayward questions. I wonder if the matriarch chosen Autumn was another test from Concord. Did I choose another one here? I did not. Mystics Magistrate. Um, the of bureaucracies and mishmash of religious and temporal organizations accumulated over centuries of success of matriarchs. Premier Blaze intends to begin the process of standardizing, streamlining, secure, secularizing the civil service with the common oath. Um, but today I'm glad to be proven wrong. For Concord <coughs> has resurrected Kyria through this very mayor and has humbled the proud like me for believing that Concord was not powerful enough to sow this great change through unassuming name. But before I get to the heart of the matter, I must talk about the head. Autumn Blaze did not leave the realm out of the silence by herself. The way fire played a central role in ensuring that among the dizzying number of avenues we suddenly we found ourselves presented with, we're led down straight, straight and narrow. When Fickle and his associates ask us for deals and investments, I ask for temperance, but they did also show me Kieran lives, how they can be improved with inventions and ideas imported from across the world. When rising their followers asked us to reconsider core tenants, I declined on the surface of it, but I stayed and listened for the under 
underlying supports of pain experienced by those of much lower stations than mine. Through it all, there was Autumn. When I told her of a policy of our movement wasn't progressing too speedily, Autumn was saying yes, but she had something else to offer. A test against tradition, or rather what I thought was tradition, but instead had grown in aberration. The accretion, accretion of corruption and inter interpreting concord. Uh, the Kyria of five centuries ago is not the same of Kyria of today. Um, and the, if the way of fire was right, our core faith would still prove true, just manifested in new ways. <coughs> Thus, some things must enter the winter of their life. The hierarchy was fading fast, but while I shall miss it dearly, we have no need for it. Us mystics and priestesses shall continue the work we have done since the beginning. Autumn knows that without faith and concord of the matriarch, there is no Kira, and apart from the scales and horns we share as creatures, what that what makes us Kirin is a is a piety and faith that let us stand heroically in the world as a great flame for others to model themselves after. No longer shall I gloss these political terms like conservative or traditionalist and say we are to be sages like those of old, having matured into something greater than the glories of our youth, your youth able to understand everything. And this autumn is a sage too, for she had somehow woven every line of Kieran living into a great hole. The many pigments and dyes rolled into one, and an assembly of singers and disconnected tunes seemed to turn into a symphony that no ear has heard until now. Which leads me to the heart of the matter. A few weeks ago, uh, Autumn begged me to go on tour to see Renown Kyria. Uh, Renew Kyria. In her words, you got to get out of the stuff you'll have Vermillion someday, not paying heed to her ignorance of how often I did go out of Vermillion from time to time. I took a request and traveled with a few select mystics to see the Romans or search in glory. Now, by no means a cloistered flame, but the difference between Kyria of the Silence and Kyria as of the present is night and day. And like everyone else, I was born in the Silence was well underway, and at the times when Kyria was holy before then, I only heard by, by words and stories passed down. Today, everywhere I look, it is as if my ancestors came back to life, treating me with smiles and approval of how Kira has returned to Concord in many new forms. <coughs> the cities flourish with activity and life. The ports teem with trade and exciting for foreigners. The villages blossom with innocent camaraderie, and the shrines and temples are as full as they had ever reported being during the iridescent dawn's reign. I even attended a rising fire ritual, as if from afar, just to say my curiosity. <coughs> When the service was over, I still inwardly denied their assumption about Concord, but I could not deny the friendliness and openness of the congregation, fostered by the belief that Concord is not to be locked away in some inaccessible place or creature, but is to be talked to in here in the here and now, a caring mother travels incredible distances to be with every one of her children. So I end this so ended with this. It is for Autumn, along with everyone else she has strung, strung along, that I think Concord and the Matrix Superior. The treatment of harmony, of peace with ourselves and each other, and Concord has been found in Autumn. Nice. Sure, why not? A Kyrian National Police. A policing in the Rome has been a task of the myriad of local, regional, paramilitary, and religious organizations. The complexities of modern society require the formation of a centralist and secular national police against agency to fight crime. Keep the peace and protect the Kyrian. Designated marksmen. Trained snipers could be incredibly beneficial for armies, able to spot enemies and attack them from great distances, giving our soldiers room to breathe. But training marksmen, incorporating them into their divisions, will be gaining a significant edge of battle. The Alpine Corps. Around Vermilion and on our borders with the deer and llamas in the north, Kira is covered in large deep mountains. While they are already irreplaceable for defensive purposes, trained mountaineer corps could also use them to our advantage for daring attacks. Unlike our enemies, we know these mountains, and so I want to make use of it. The parachute rangers. The avenue of aviation gave us access to many new tactics that were previously not possible. One of them specifically banners that would drop out enemy lines or wreak havoc. I focused on training such divisions and creating new ways to supply them better that allow them to operate on enemy territory much more efficiently. Which is a really good thing to do. And we're up here. Today was a day of days, one of those days I ever have dayed. That's a good thing. After a long time of effort, we managed to create an oath that would be sworn by all servants <clears throat> of the realm, no matter their position, whether they're local or national officers, elected or appointed, they're secular, religious, anything and everything in between. There's no one common oath that will all swear that uh, will tie the government of the realm together into something real and paramount. Or permanent, really. Why is this something to be right about, then you may ask? That's because it's a huge deal, that's why nothing like this has ever existed in the realm before. Before, during, and immediately after the silence, uh, <clears throat> the realm was a mismatch of governing ideas, all rooted in religious devotion, a semi theocratic state with mystics and priestesses occupying key roles, while local governors, mayors, banner clans, and much more and more had all a level of autonomy. Talk about a headache trying to change anything from within the system. But the Grand Gallop Bunner offered an opportunity to change things, and after I hammered out some idea of modern civil service inspired by Questio onto the thing with crook nails and rusty hammer, we finally had a framework to start peeling back some of the many layers of legislative paint that had been slapped onto it over the centuries. Thus, the perfect opportunity to provide a starting point for reorganizing, streamlining, and the laws and the branches of the government by getting every kind of pledge or loyalty to the same thing in the same way. This, of course, ended up being a huge undertaking, much more than I ever could have thought. 
<clears throat> Every Kirin wand is simply represented in the Oath. Winter Frost wanted specific references to Concord in the Way of Fire. The movement for a modern Kirin wanted specific references to the Kirin National D Independent of the Matrix Superior. The Marxists wanted references to the Kirin people. Many ultra traditionalists wanted references to the Vermilion Dynasty. The Diaspora Fragments wanted references to the Kirin Nationals abroad. So many demands, but in the end, we agreed that the Oath should be sworn to two things the Matrix Superior and the Kirin Constitution, and that order. There was a debate over which should come first, but we ultimately agreed that the Matrix Pure Ranger is one that all Kirin, no matter their political inclinations or beliefs, no matter where they were born or what they would cause for champion, agree unifies us. And as much as Kirin people are Kira, Ranger is a realm, no matter what form or how it takes or sells itself. Well, it took a while to get the word just right, but today I led a crowd of 1,000 servants of the Vermilion State gathered in the Ver Verdigris Rotunda to swear to it, to it this morning, in the presence of Rainshine. I even have my hoof on the original copy of the new Kirin Constitution as I led the crowd into the words. Good thing I don't have to stage fright, or have stage fright. It was a magical moment, made even more magical because I knew my voice was being broadcast throughout the realm. And government officials everywhere were swearing their oaths with me to create the beginning of the new and modern Kirin. Then when it was done, we all celebrated at a feast and raised our glasses uh, to, be, to the work we had done and the work we, yet we had, had yet to accomplish. As magical as the moment was, I'm not going to lie, there's still a daunting task ahead of us. The Vermilion State is still a patchwork of overlapping jurisdictions governed by different rules, different structure, different powers, hierarchies, tradition, religious superstition, and all that fun stuff. It's super duper inefficient, and I don't dare to try to examine the systems myself to reconcile. The distances for fear I'll go mad and end up making an earlier turn to Concord. It'll go take a long time to straighten things out and streamline Kyrie into a modern state, but that's okay. We have a lot of differences to resolve, but we'll find a way to resolve them and use them to grow together. To create a strong and harmonious state, much like a quest I was enthralled with through the stories Applejack and Fluttershy told me in 1006. Keeping their harmony in mind, <clears throat> the Kirin of the realm, will work together to weave a colorful tapestry in the Kirin nation, state, and community. Harmony and diversity, if you will. Ooh, I like that one. I'll have to pitch that name at the next assembly. By embracing our diversity and harmonizing with each other, we'll create an integral part of the Kirin national ethos and create, building a greater Kiria on a scale. Well, that's it for now, Diary. There's a lot of work to be done, and it almost feels like not enough time to do it. But if we can pull all the Grand Gallop onwards, then we can accomplish anything we want to work together. The Maritime Moralities Act, huh? Ooh, also, we're here, so I'm going to do that. And we're running, oh, we literally ran out of things to build. Well, every single place is going to get more resources like this. Absolutely. Because we need it. A lot of airports. Hyacinth, Synthesy, Jubilee, and, or Jasmine, and Teak were from the far from the biggest cities in. Kirio. They occupied a strange second rate between the eight great cities and the vast ocean of smaller towns and villages um, that made up the rest of the country, but big enough to diverse, deserve some influence, uh, <clears throat> and small enough that they never actually seemed to get any, of course. In the past few weeks, several delegates uh, from these cities, referring to themselves as the Five Ports, uh, had begun to stir up trouble with some a procedural chicanery in the Morning Secretariat, uh, and the National Plenum demanded to be respected. Autumn Blaze had to call them to her office to resolve the matter. We want to be taken seriously, Premier, the delegate from Hyacinth said, with the four comrades crowded on the other side of Autumn's desk around her. All the money, attention, and political capital get sloshed around the big cities, but most Kirin in the realm live in or near towns like ours. And for several million Kirin across the country, our ports are the easiest to access to international Kirin, uh, markets for the goods, but all the shipping regulations and infrastructure grants seem to be written if, as if fragrance or radiance, and for down to the only places a Kirin is allowed to put a boat in water. Blaze frowned. I understand your concern, I'm just not sure what you want me to do to help you. Do you have a specific plan? The delegate from Jasmine slid a packet of papers across the desk. Why not help your help, uh, your help putting this in front of the Secretariat and the Plenum? It's about to create new maritime moralities that will give our cities more local authority and help us serve the interests of the millions of Kieran living in our hinterlands, too. Let's give them the front page of the paper and gulp to well, five new moralities. I'll see, really, certainly see what we can do here. Oh, God. <coughs> five maritime moralities. Five of Kira's coastal towns have risen into prominence as key ports through which international trade and commerce, key drivers of the realm's integration of the global economy, flow. The Kira begin to clamor for the same rights and privileges of self-government afforded to the great eight, eight great cities, and who are we to deny this enterprising Kira of their laudable aspirations? Army Tanker School. Tanks are another rather recent development in the warfare that didn't manage to find its way to Kira due to the silence. We not lack only the tanks themselves, but also capable personnel to operate them efficiently. We cannot expect that our enemies to be as far as behind as us, so something needs to be changed in this regard. The artillery branch. The artillery is one of the most oldest part and most important parts of the modern warfare, and there are circumstances being able to easily shred through enemy soldiers and fortifications. While well, the destruction it brings is devastating, the war is not always allowed for such moral qualms. And besting into the research regarding this weaponry is necessary to ensure Kira's military victories should the need arise. The Rocketeer Corps. For centuries, the Kirin have wielded a prior techniques for entertainment and industry. Using modern technology, military application can be found for the rockets of the Kirin so found for. Fond for. Fond of. Squad weapons development. 
Military technology does not remain stagnant, but unfortunately, due to the science, it didn't cure you. We well, barely moved on from the arbicus, arcubuses. Some nations have already started incorporating magic crystals into their weapons. It would be wise move to invest in the research of better, faster, more reliable weapons for our soldiers if we were to keep with, up with the rest of the world. And, uh, I guess, bicycle shop guns. Firearms, firearms can get someone costing production, and which can strain Kira's resources. Our designers and artificers move that simplifying the designs can reduce the production's costs and help us save some resources so we can use them elsewhere. It should give us ideas I just support as they are likely to benefit us substantially in the long term. Ooh, pioneers. Pioneers are pretty good. Alright. Tons of defense. Soft attack breakthrough. How's marines and line battalions, too? Well, I'll compare to engineers and whatnot. I'm going to take your school. We definitely need some engineers. Good God. Jesus Christ. Um, let's see this one. Kier National Police. I've mentioned here divinities, legations. Kier's ascension to the world stage requires a network of embassies and consulates in friendly and not so friendly countries around the world. We must send forth representatives of our new Kyria to establish international friendships and trading ties with fellow harmonic nations as well as become full members of the international community. Kier legations, capitals, cities of friendly nations. Support weapons are nice. There you go. Nuclear bombs, nice. Yes. 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 Hundreds Beacon Banner. Strength may be uh, shown by smashing a paw, but a lord of pot, shop, pot shirts knows neither love nor honor. It was very naive of me to th assume that I was the only Nyrick or <laughs> Kyrick, Kieran and Kira who had the guts to address our Nyrick problems. I understood that now, thanks to the numerous kind-hearted folks that I've met on my travels, but it was also naive of me to fall into depression and believe that I was the only foul-hearted Kieran in the country today. On an otherwise uneventful train trip, I had met a very bad Kieran. Command that singing sore was very presentable, wearing his national police uniform and vigorously defending Autumn Blaze from some perceived slight when I encountered him in the parlor car. And I continued to hold core on the particulars of whatever right response unit he commanded, I began to overhear some unpleasant things. Nats. Nets, bullet launchers, batons, water cannons, bayonets, sab sabers, and shotguns. Naked steals, he said, a little too proudly. And that's when I started to realize that I enjoyed his work breaking up these protests, not unlike how I used to enjoy my studies. When I confronted him, he was calm as could be, like a tour guide answering some common questions. Of course, the National Police needs uh, to bear bayonets or brand shotguns at times, he explained. Nyrics are dangerous, and by definition, are unreasonable. Left for control, they're a danger to themselves and others, ideally. Uh, they can be stopped uh, through the mildest means possible, but they need to be stopped no matter what. But it was when I asked him about how often they were using these weapons that Nairik against, against Nairik that I felt my heart uh, hit my stomach. These are weapons for bringing up rides before a Nairik transformation occurs. Singing Sword explained, hitting the riders hard and fast with shock and awe, containing the mass of rioters, quickly breathed, breaking them into small groups, suppressing into Kieran who started as Schmolder. I had to admit that from his explanations it seemed brutally effective, um, and his proud claims that there hadn't been a single Nairik transformation during one of his crackdowns spoke to that. Of course, if there hadn't been any Nairik transformations, was his office perhaps being a little overzealous and it's all brutal precautions? No, no, at least he assured me. It was a sickeningly charming smile, after all. Why doesn't put away their umbrella because they aren't getting wet? Out of left field. A surprise candidate entered uh, the previously sedate elections to the morality of Radiance today. And the press has certainly done quite a number on her. From her last name, one could have expected Miss Mayflower Bloom to run on one of NAKP affiliated tickets. But she shocked the nation by announcing that she had been back in this staunchly left wing movement for modern Kyria. It was not long before reports of a controversial, some would say disqualifyingly abhorrent, prior careers of research of Nairic biology the all Kira Collegium began to surface, but Miss Bloom met with criticism head on. I was wrong about Kira, New York's and Kira, she said, when cornered by uh, reporters following her announcement speech. I intend to make my amends for my past as mayor. She refused for the comment, of course. Her professed program of MMK policies would certainly seem that way. Her platform consists of a laundry list of popular left-wing priorities running the gamut, from increased education funding to a powerful proposal, a proposed mayoral commission on the labor and unemployment. Our other candidates appear to be scrambling as Mayflower's campaign surges to the fore, particularly after both the peasant unions and the Worker Party, Workers' Party of Kyria officially endorsed her in a coordinated press conference. One thing is certain, Mayflower's sharp wit and popular campaign present or represent a chink in the armor of the right's otherwise solid control of the greater power of evidence. Should she win, it would represent a decisive victory of the left over the NKP-affiliated parties, dominant in the north. Mayflower Bloom's cousin, Arna Bloom, 
the fragrance-based influential chair of the Realm Development Planning Commission, and now, it seems, when one of his cousin's chiefest political opponents could not be reached for the comment. Who is this mayor? Focus. Uh, huh. Why is he doing the artillery branch? Where's but still? Celsius Venture, of course. Oh, Land of Harmony. Oh, what is this? Mayor Mayflower. The key to the city. Uh, Mayflower blooms quick wit, enduring popularity and seemingly bottomless compassion and humility of all but guarantee the electoral success of a party. The movement for modern cure is appointed opportunity. Has an opportunity to capitalize on a reputation and turn the radiant diet and mayorality into safe seats. Interesting. Very quite interesting. That seems nice, though. Oh, well. Because we are a harmonious nation. But, you know, we'll still see what they're all, all about. What do we got here? Passive defense. It's nice. Any parson. Good. Good stuff. Because <coughs> we already read a couple other focuses earlier. Um, but. Teach them temperance. Not aligned. Terrageous cure. We probably won't do this one. So if you don't know this one, please go right ahead. Forget not the fifth end of the way of fire. Mutual respect and tolerance, in addition to respect for the rule of law, equal rights, and political inclusivity, are essential for curing democracy to flourish. Together, we will help each other to resolve our disputes using words, not hooves, so our differences can be overcome through peaceful dialogue and understanding. The key to the city. The hard fought mayorality elections and ratings are over, and as the prize of all who would assume this would remain a, a safely right wing seat, Mayflower Bloom and the movement of a modern cura have prevailed. Uh, a long day of counting ballots and reporting precincts have concluded with a victory speech given by Mayor, uh, Mayor elect Mayflower in one of the Radiance's many Riverside parks. Tonight we've seen the Kieran and Radiance step up and demand not just change but progress. Not just wealthy pro prosperity, not just technology, but modernity. Not just love service to harmony, but a true realization of the peace and plenty for all. And I cannot be more honored to have been chosen to lead the city forward as we strike a new course. I have more than a few Kieran to thank for the privilege of becoming the next Mayor of Radiance. But she cleared her throat and paused for a moment before nodding. To all my supporters, I thank you for your hard work. And must direct and direct detractors. Thank you for keeping me honest, she said to a few chuckles. Thank you, Autumn Blaze. Uh, the morning secretary and the matriarch appeared for forging a modern Kyrian, where this kind of election is even possible, she continued, to rousing cheers. And thank you to a hoopful of Kyrians who have forever touched my heart, to Song Thrush, to Orange Blossom, Snowy Wool, and Margin Call, to Luminous Flame, Kindling Flash, Silver Lining, and a thousand other names the souls I've encountered. Thank you, thank you for teaching me that there's a bottom of strength and simple compassion, infinite possibility in the honest work of the common Kyrian. She paused again before taking a very deep breath. More than anyone else who ever lily, she said, and turned to face the mayor standing behind and beside her, who merely blushed, thank you for showing me that every Kieran, including myself, is worth it. The photo of the kiss that follows make sure is to make sure to make every broadcast sheet in the morning. To peace, progress, and plenty for all. Cool. Um, Vermilion Mountains Crystals. Due to the supernatural origin of the Vermilion Mountains, these rocky ranges are home to unusually fertile cave systems sworn by magical crystals. Uh, a dedicated mining network no doubt can cover a multitude more. Vermilion Mountain Tungsten Mines, a divine mountain that contour the birthplace of all Kieran lies heavily with the bounty of mutual metal blessings such as Wolframite, Sheolite, or Sheolite, and other Tuck State ores. In tandem with their methods of benefaction, extracting tungsten out of these, the Vermilion Mountains will give us a competitive advantage on the global precious metal market. Nice. Infantry tank cats. Well, tanks are powerful by themselves. They can also be used to support infantry. Developing small, fast tank cats will help us, uh, allow us to use them alongside hoof soldiers during combat. While infantry tanks are a relatively new concept that still has yet to be proving itself during the war, we believe it does have great potential. Mechanized fire support. Mechanized infantry divisions, while cost of production and maintenance, can be very useful in the battlefield. Therefore, we should do whatever we can to maximize the potential. Focusing resources on developing state of the art turreted vehicles is certainly a step in the right direction. Maneuver tanks. While our tanks can already reach quite impressive speeds, our artificers believe that there is still room for improvement. If we reduce their weight and overall improve their engines, we'll certainly outmaneuver our enemies with ease. Artificer companies give you more suppression, but we don't need that. It actually lowers organization more than anything else. Um, more entrenchment. Entrenchment. Uh, Almost 9 breakthrough, almost 10 breakthrough, 15 soft attack, 15 to way more entrenchment. There's suppression, same organization. Production cost is way lower for this one, though. But gives you more uh, fort, river, jungle, marsh. This is fort, river, amphibious, forest, hills, jungle. It gives you more defense. 
Hmm. These are really for Marines, though. Go with Pioneers, Military Hospitals, March P overall. Um, use both for these. Because it does give you more amphibious attack. So let's see him extremely tanky. Spartan to tank. We'll see about that. Activate the Peaks of Peril. Peaks of Peril Mountain Range have been a dangerous and fatal place worthy of its name for all but most hardy Kirin. However, when the Sorghum Foundry first mined the origins of the past, uh, uh, in the peaks, it would only be a matter of time until these peaks could be conquered with the full backing of the steel apparatus. These once invisible mountains will be harvested. That'd be great. Teach them temperance. What about next? Jade expands crystal fields. A curious farthest reaches to lay rows upon rows upon rows of rolling hills and smaller mountains wherein hide pockets of magic crystals. Well, the Kieran that call the Jade Expanse home have gleaned the expanse of crystals since the world's creation, bringing individual industrial forces to bear uh, what greatly enriches their value. Happy 1019, everybody. The Tripan Mountains Crystal Mines. Not too far from mascot hulks like Tripan Mountains, a formidable wall between major river systems and trade routes. Thanks to these auspicious surroundings, there's much credit in proposals to excavate these mountains from magic crystals on unforeseen, on, on an unseen scale. Providence Demens Aluminum Plants. A modern military force requires aircraft and other strange vehicles, which themselves require strange materials of familiar or familiar or ones that are hard to come by. So where better than to house a significant part of the production process in one of Kier's most advanced provinces, Providence and Providence and bustling capital of Rhapsody. Rocketeer Corps. The base legations, sure. All about that armor, man. Utilitarian adventures, good. <coughs> Dockyard, nice. Support weapons are good too. Nice. Just in case. You never know. Now we're out of command power, too. Land of Harmony. Autumn Blaze successfully brought Kiri out of the science in the re process of remolding the realm according to harmonic vision and ideals. The Kiri of today is not the one of modern, uh, not as only modern and industrial, but democratic, harmonic, and progressive. Inalienable characteristics of a new Kiri. That seems like a good idea. Yeah. And what do we get here? Um, development commission. Oh, we another one here too, huh? Resources, Grand Cup onwards. Appoint Mayflower Bloom as political advisor. Mayflower Bloom. Blaze Bloom. We could. 20 days, we'll see what that's like. Land of Harmony. There you go. No ships yet, huh? It takes a long time to build these ships, man. So don't need more dockyards, though. What's this? Establish a legation in Vermilion? Oh. Yeah, why not? Sounds like a good idea. Another dockyard? Yeah. A vacation at last. God, couldn't we all use that, man? Look at the reactors built one. River Lily snuck up behind Mayflower Bloom <clears throat> and threw her hooves around the mayor's neck, pulling her in tie for a hug that left mayor. Mayflower squawking for the alarm for the briefest of moments. Uh, then they both burst into a fit of giggles and Mayflower collected herself. Babe, I'm working. Five more minutes, Mayflower said, and Lily huffed before she let him go. Only a few more days and I'll have you all to myself again and on the beach to Jubilee no less. Mayflower could only giggle back at Lily's enthusiasm. It was true. Too, but too long, but exciting years of amicate government and radiance were drawing to a close. Soon she would be passing the torch to the next mayor, her time. 
at this level. Politics has certainly been enriching, but to run again. But Mayflower had known without, for a while that the job simply left her too busy to run again. She wanted a position where she could spend more time with Lily these days. <clears throat> in the t two busy years, she had spearheaded new social programs, open city ministries that now helped hundreds of Kieran every day stood up against the lockout in the city's canneries. But she hadn't had time to take a vacation with Lily. More seriously, Lily said, getting a setting an envelope on a Mayflower's desk. Some Kieran gave me this to let the door. I guess it was too important to wait for the morning mail. Mayflower looked down and immediately recognized with a sudden pit in her stomach. Two different seals on the stationery, one for the Rome and, one, and the Harmony Party, and one for the Office of Premier of Kyria. How do you think I waited until my last day to get in trouble with the Premier? <coughs> the Rome needs more Kieran like you. Ooh, complete Mayflower Bloom story arc. Nice. Mayflower Bloom, my name is Song Thrush. Hope this letter finds you well. I hope that it's not too selfish to wonder if you remember me. It was only it was only when the premier asked me to draft this letter that I realized we had met once before. Mayflower cocked her head and then remembered. Song Thrush, that inspiring RAHP activist activist from LHG, near enough almost near three years ago. Evidently she'd moved up the ranks. At any rate, the success of your reforms as mayor of Radiance has not gone unnoticed in the Roman Harmony Party. While we never ask you to renounce your own party, the premier, on the advice of several other of her aides, has been interested in bringing you into the government to oversee an ambitious package of upcoming social and economic reforms. To be blunt, the premier hopes that you can help her replicate your success in the Radiance across the whole of the realm, and if uh, MMK is willing to spare you. Letter one went on to provide a number of details about the post that Mayflower knew she could review later. The important thing is that this was hardly be the step back from the politics she was hoping for, but the chance to help improve the lives of literally millions of Kieran. May, you look like you've seen a ghost, Lily said, putting a hoop on a Mayflower's shoulder and snapping her out of a chance that she didn't realize she'd slipped into. Is this something bad? Mayflower gulped. Taking this offer would mean even less time with Lily. I think it would be unbelievably selfish. I'm sorry about her vacation, but the realm needs me for a million. Weekly stability gain. Wow. There's nothing. Let's get back to Jubilee Love. Oh, God. Honestly, we already have people here that are working for us. As much as I want to do this, it would be great. We don't really need to have this one. Let's give her, let's give her time. Let's give her, go be with her. Give her time. I have another journal entry after this. Moralities. Oh, we need a factory release to members. There's someone we could, we could beat up. They could join us. Huh. Dictators and despots are unafraid to spill oceans of blood for their conquests. For harmony to stand strong, the Roman or allies must pool their knowledge to maintain their technological advantage. So you guys, we can offer to the Khalidi dervishes to join the hundreds begins a court, huh? Fuck, Fahamka the bark. Well, we'll see. If there's one thing I learned when I studied that, that temple in Massacre when I was in Life Philly, okay, I learned a lot from more than one thing, at least ten. It was philosophy. Maybe not philosophy itself, but since religious shut-ins get all that, can only want to think about how they can think about the same thing they think about all the time, in a slightly different way this time, but I learned how to think good. And I've been doing a lot of thinking about lately, but very important to me, harmony. Ever since I met the first first met Applejack and Fluttershy, all those years ago, they told me that about a question of how every pony there lives in harmony. I've always wanted to find some way to bring that harmony to Kyria. Unfortunately, Kyria is a very different country from Equestria, and that means a lot of Kyrian problems require Kyrian solutions. When I first heard about Equestria from the pair, my pair of pony pals, I thought I didn't sound too different from the realm of its core. Equestria was a nation built on peace and stability, and isn't that what Kyria was? It had been so peaceful and so stagnant that it hadn't changed in a century. Surely that meant it was harmonious, right? But as they talked, I soon realized it was a different key difference. Harmony isn't just peace and stability. You can have that without harmony and mandated through oppression. That's exactly what the sense was. The realm was the most peaceful and stable state in Zebrakel, but it wasn't exactly harmonious. That got me to do some thinking, and I realized that uh, true harmony doesn't mean that every Kieran has to be uniform or conform to every party line, but rather finding a balance between our differences. Kieran is a land of a lot of different Kieran who all have different ideas of how, for how the country should be fixed. The Grand Cop Otto taught me that with a lot of painful lessons, but when we all work together in unison, the differences between Kieran and the realm are the very thing that made us stronger. Each of the parties in the plenum approached the challenges of modernizing the realm in their own way, and the different ideas that emerged allowed us to cover each other's weaknesses and amplify another one's strengths. That's what we got to re realize what true harmony is. Kieran or Equestrian or otherwise, as long as multiple different forces work together towards some common goal, and together they're all stronger than they're apart, that's harmony. <clears throat> that's what makes Equestrian so successful. And though Kyrians aren't Equestrians, is what helped. So what helping to make the Garamas succeed in what others would believe to be impossible. No matter our differences, as long as we realize that we're all one big Kieran community, that we have more in common with each other than not, we can work collectively towards a common goal that makes something truly special. 
I guess it's all been a nice metaphor. Harmony is a symphony, sure. A flute can sound really good on its own, but when it's by itself, it has nothing to harmonize with. It is surround that flute with chimes and drums and airs and all other wonderful different instruments that let them play together to create a symphony. Just like in the symphony, all the different parts have to work together in a collective and cooperative effort to flourish, contributing their strengths to the performance and amplifying their strengths together. That's what us Kirin are. We're all instruments of the great symphony that is Kirio, and together we can play the harmonious music of our history and future. Kai Lady Dervishes accepts invitation to the Hundred Beacons Accord. Uh, this country has accepted, uh, decided to accept our offer to join the Hundreds Beacons Accord, and so we shall stand and fall together. Together we shall defend harmony. And down for uh, harmony and prosperity. And the South Sea Venture. Riches and plenty wait us in the jungles of Taliari, if only we had the boldness of secret fortunes there. With the NKP's military assets to dissolve, the bars of funding to become a completely new enterprise as a South Sea Venture Company. The riches of the far south, with the NKP having sold off much of its military assets, it has found itself flush with cash and chosen to invest in foreign trade. In the pre silence era, Kira's grasp on the southern trade routes was near total, and the NKP's newest subsidiary, the South Sea Venture Company, has been tasked with restoring some of the old routes, seeking to tap into the riches of the Zipican far south. Uh, the SSVC has begun to build a series of trade ports along the coastline. These trade ports are setting up connections, carefully such, with local tribes. The tribes of Taliari, especially, are infamously hostile to outsiders. And a small part, thanks to the legend of the great Golden City, they didn't deepen their jungles and their adventures that is such an attractive. Yet for now, the opposite remain untouched. And these tribes are slowly making contact with the ports where everything that they could ever dream of is available at reasonable prices. Not just goods either, but technology and training. Long term, uh, the tribes are open to trade. Um, will be offered contracts to develop their own regions economically, and which in turn will find, offer them unmatched prosperity and access to lucrative markets in Kiri and beyond. Don't worry, it's all peaceful. For now. Yeah, for now. Yeah. And I'm seeing a detachment down here. Also, uh, I did throw these guys on here. And now we've added on some you know, engineers over here and see if everybody talents. I've actually threw on some rocket artillery because I just want a lot of soft attack. And researching a lot of soft attack too. So, brute force collaborators are very nice. Ooh, actually, I might throw on logistics because I remember how bad it was uh, doing this initially. God, it was pretty god awful. Um, so, we might actually get involved. We might not. We'll see. We have no subs, but whatever. Doesn't matter to us too much. Extraction, yes, please. We are still out of chromium, but you know, we only have 160, that's not that much, right? Um, so we're just gonna wait to see when things really explode for us down here. Also, we do have eight ships in our navy now six heavy ships, six battleships, really, and two cru light cruisers, which is not the worst thing we've ever had. So, boom, Thames in the south. Times are good. And the South Sea Venture Company, after their initial hesitation, the tribes have discovered a hunger for, of course, modern goods. Oh, God. <clears throat> and several tribes in the region have established closer bonds with uh, the company. Firearms in particular have uh, been of great interest, and the tribes are willing to let large tracts of land to the SSVC for in, in exchange for them. Um, this land will now be used to plant the, uh, the first rubber plantations in the region, with the natives being able to buy goods that are reduced for eights in exchange for the laborers uh, there. The capitalists, to capitalize on the boom times, uh, the SSVC is planning on the construction of outposts up the rivers in order to reach more tribes. <clears throat> Rover boats are being brought in to take an expedition uh, up to the rivers to convince the inland tribes to let the SSVC establish itself, and the company is currently courting investors. It's quite the opportunity. Nice. Look at all those. Uh, burning detachments. <coughs> And fire has always been one of those most important elements of Kieran na nature, but it was, unusual, it was usually associated with the Narek state and its dangers nowadays. Uh, we can access this power in a weaker but much more controlled way, using the newly developed incendiary lance known as the Molten Tongue. We'll be able to unleash the flames against our enemies more easily and more safely than before. Fantastic. Very good. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, because South Sea Venture is actually very bad if you don't do it right. I remember it last time during the pre-release. It was very, very difficult to do. We'll see. I do want logistic companies just in case. It gives you more breakthrough, which I didn't realize. Soft attack would be bad either. Just tons of soft attack. Tons and tons and tons of soft attack as we keep boosting it more and more and more and more and more. You still have no political power because I was trying to increase our relations with uh, Boltrian Kindu. So. Is what it is. The heart of the jungle. Oh god. I give us first, let us do this one maybe. Uh, Matrix Spirit, Premier Autumn Blades, member of the Morning Secretariat. It is my pleasure to report that our endeavors in the far south have started to bear fruit. 
With increased security, we've managed to crack down on banditry and stabilize the coastal regions. Our construction efforts are proceeding on a schedule, and every day we're offloading more material and staff. The South Sea Venture Company is at the moment preparing an expedition towards uh, the Golden City along with our local allies in order to stabilize the region more permanently. Forgive my interruption, Fern Flair spoke up, but as far as I know, the kind of expedition that you're speaking of has been attempted repeatedly, with few of any successes. The Griffins attempted it a century ago and ended the complete destruction of the expedition became enough of a fiasco that they refused to enter the jungle again. Are we planning to add ourselves to that list? Technology has advanced since then, the expedition you speak of was ostensibly destroyed by some magical monster in the jungle. The Griffins are infamously arrogant, and having to admit that they were defeated by a tribe zebras with spears and balls are not acceptable to them. Thus, they conjured up stories of giant monsters to save face. And as for other expeditions, they are mostly private ventures with a fraction of the resources we will be deploying here. In fact, to those who are interested, the SSVC is courting additional investors at this time. Those who worry about the expedition's safety are more than welcome to invest in it to improve their chances. To those who don't doubt the SSVC's ability to pro properly prepare for the water weights, we're expecting great returns on these efforts. Remind the Honorable Co-Chair not to hawk company shares in the Secretariat. But we'll see. Rural Self-Defense Syndicates our southern frontier against Zykirin, the Zeblu, and the Rome have been frequently raided over the centuries, and the locals are famous for the militias, organizing and supporting these militias will bolster this relatively exposed flank. Yeah. Just any more military factors, though. Because we still don't have enough of anything here. Seafarer battalions. Looking pretty good. Yeah, I think I want to throw... As much as I want pioneers to support anti-tank and air, we already have anti-tank. This would be pretty good. Support rocket artillery, 53 more soft attack. It, does, it hurts us in every other case, but it just gives us so much more to work with. It's actually not bad. What would happen here? I ought to go to negative 150. Hmm. Hello. Let's see more armored cars, huh? Wait, how are we missing more armored cars? We got an issue with infantry. Oh, this is mechanized, duh. Where are, where are the armored cars? I'm not making. Down the artery of the interior. Eh, whatever. The lone river boat steamed down the river down river was in a miserable state, struggling to stay afloat, even as its crew, what few of them still remained, all they could do was keep going. The jungle seemed to reach out for them, the cacophony of birds and insects and animals gotten to leave only the weak coughing of their engine and far behind them, the sound of horns. Come on, come on, come on, the mechanic coaxed the engine frantically. It's, come on, sweetie, you can do it. Don't doubt me now, please. Her voice broke as she looked out of the engine room towards the back of the ship where two guards hunched over the boat's armored gu gunwale. They were both clutching their rifles with smoke shaking hooves, occasionally speaking out from behind him. Is it still after us? I don't know, I don't know. They've been br so brave at first. No, not though. No care was brave. I think the horns are coming closer, though. Can't think. Can this thing go faster? I'm doing the best I can. There's hardly anything in the engine left. Well, if you don't, whatever he was going to say died in his throat, courtesy of the spear that burst through it, pinning his body down the desk. The other guard squealed in fear, raising his rifle, firing it towards the tree from which it had come. Crack after crack rippled through the air, only to have to be drawn up by this ear splitting, roaring crash of thunder as the wind picked up from behind the boat. From breeze to gust to gale, roses of fog poured among the trees. Oh, Concord, far behind them, where the river vanished into the jungles, two burning eyes appeared in a thick fog. The eyes were rapidly approached as the wind rose to a fever pitch. No, 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 no. The screams were drowned out by another roar as a fog crashed over them. The last thing they heard was the thunder. The last thing they saw was the lightning. A few days later, the charred husk that was once a boat came drifting out of the jungle. Woe betide those who try to reach a heart of the jungle. Oh, God. Did I not research armored cars yet? Yeah, we put them all that stuff on there. Kieran's burden. Matrix Superior, Premier Autumn Blaze, members of the Morning Secretariat. Snow, Cypress Snow addressed the chamber. It's with regret that I stand here before you today. As you know, the situation in the far south has turned dire. Our outposts are under attack from local tribes. There are no mere raids either, but full of sieges by aggressors de determined to uh, drive us into the sea. Our efforts to bring the NAKP in line with the Kieran Constitution. Uh, we have disbanded most of our military assets. Consequently, as of now, we're unable to protect these outposts, and I must request that the Kieran Army intervene to protect these outposts and bring hostilities to an end. As much as we sympathize with your plight, these outposts are in foreign lands, are they not? Fur Flair asked. An intervention. Like what you're requesting would constitute an invasion of a land that is clearly seated does not desire your presence. So, I don't have early trucks, huh? <clears throat> I would understand if you asked for aid in evacuating the region, but aggression of the kind you're proposing would be unprecedented. When Kira came out of the silence, it was forced to advance quickly, and there's not one Kira present who could testify how hard the time was. Cypress Snow looked out across the chamber, yet yeah, we persevered, and we stand as a great modernizing force in Zephyrka. For these tribes who have li lived trapped in the past centuries, who should give them the tools of modernity if not us? You know the challenges that it offers better than any Kieran else, and what greater purpose can Kira have than take on this bird of elevating these tribes abandoned by the time of craving our instruction? 
Should we instead abandon them to be dragged back into barbarism by the mutual mistrustful kin? Or should we let the world know that Kira is a tutor that has not abandoned its students? Oh god. Votes for intervention. Uh, that kind of goes with what we did. I did it before. Uh, but we vote for intervention. Fine. I was going to plan. I was planning on just not doing that, but whatever. South. Oh, the far south expeditionary force. So the slim majority. The majority more secretary voted for intervention. And now Kira's armed forces. I was being scrambled to intervene in the far south. Time is of the essence, and auto said on Autumn Blaze looked down on the two dossiers given to her. Two different plans have been put forth, and the question of what should be done. General Hysop Garnet proposed a full scale intervention. Battle lines were fluid in the jungle, and the tribes knew the latter inside out. In response, General Garnet suggested that Kira leverage his full force to shock the tribes into surrendering. Heavy artillery, mechanized assets, and air power would all be deployed to ensure that the tribes would be faced with an overwhelming force far beyond what they could uh, to defeat. Faced with full understanding of the dragon they had awoken, the tribes would realize that their only option was surrendering. This would make the war bloody but short. In contrast, General Coral River argued for more limited intervention, where the goal was not, was not to cow the tribes into submission, but to tire them out and reach accord with their local leaders. Having started the zebra tribes of the far south, General River posited that each tribe should be understood as a nation unto itself, and therefore the goal to be placated or pacify them, one after the other, to dissolve the coalition. If we draw out intervention, one that would place restrictions on our own armed forces, but General River was confident it would be the best way to avoid a bloodbath. Autumn Blaze stared out into the dossiers, wondering how it had gone so horribly wrong that this was Kira's first great foreign venture. A sickened her, but she had no choice. Or rather, she did have a choice, the one she had to make herself here now that was made her so queasy. Coral, Coral Rivers. Because I, I think I did the other one last time. I immediately do that. These are all good people. I love that person. Oh, please do not train. Please, for the love of God, do not train right now. Are you insane? So, how are we... Oh, God. Dang it. We're going to have to fire. From the Bush War School. Okay, jungle rat. Coral River. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead do that. Wait, Coral River, where are you? The Far South military intervention is not a conventional war per se, but a foreign military expedition carried out by the specially formed Kira and South Forces. Kira Force. Under the leadership of Supreme Commander General Coral River, to achieve a specific set of actions, limited objectives in the Far South Southern Theater. Yet I have no political power. I can't do anything here. Except rules of engagement. <clears throat> Require supply to victory. Huh. Maybe two more down here, maybe. The Petty Rebellion and the Secretariat. <clears throat> the situation in the Morning Secretariat is increasingly untenable. Sources tell me that a cross caucus alliance by the K, along with a progressive bloc and rebels from the RAHP, will soon table a motion to impose further restrictions on the Rome's intervention in the far south. The proposal will place a time limit on our operations that opposition will only mount as time passes. Pine Fire tells me that increasing numbers of our own delegates will not revolt against party discipline the longer we are bogged down in the far south. Well, we have lots to fall back on our corporate interests and increasingly nebulous appeals of nationalism against nothing but natives that the public is increasingly in favor of. And we must emphasize must reach some sort of acceptable resolution of the far south situation until the year's up. Or we'll be forced by the Secretariat to withdraw, regardless of whether the terms uh, thereof are preferable or not. Yours truly. Oh god dang it. Unless Western territory is bushwhackers. Valiance. We have only ten. From the balance of the realm, reliability, infrastructure, weather, well, that makes sense. Form the far south army sector. Earthworks, huh? We got all stuff. We got war measures here.
We've got a few more divisions here. But what we have is very good. We just need to build up our stuff as fast as possible right now. And they're attacking us too, huh? That's not ideal. But when we hit them, we hit them very hard. Kira Force was established by extraordinary mandate enacted by the Morning Secretary, giving the mission of protecting Kira and interests in the far south. Due to deep seated opposition to the intervening or intervention on the RAHP, crucial concession to enable the passage of the mandate was imp imposition of a strict schedule of one year for the conclusion of the intervention. If Kira Force's objectives are not achieved before then, they must be, by legal constitutional obligation, be forced to withdraw. Supreme Commander speaks. Honorable members, General Coral River, the doorkeeper shouted in the chambers, the Coral River bestrode the podium. Uniform and metal shining in the light. She coughed to catch her breath, look outwards on the civil delegates, members of the Secretary, and honorable ministers. I acknowledge the outcome of this vote. As General of the Vermilion and Korean Army, I consider my prime duty to finish a mission in the far south and as clean and as quick as manner as possible. I acknowledge the need for our mission to be a limited one. I consider the recent vote to be a back backing of this course of action. I'll work to implement this. I ask, however, that the Morning Secretary abstain from interference in the day-to-day -day decision making of the Kieran Force of the South and to concern themselves instead with overarching political considerations. I will continue to work to find alternate solutions to the current crisis and to keep the Morning Secretary fully informed of my developments and my rise. Thank you for your time. I hope she does. What's this? Are we actually lost the battle cup? Make your god dang ports and whatnot. Police. Any more arty? So they're training you guys. You guys down here. So much manpower do they have? They have a crap ton of manpower. Oh my god. That's insane. Speed loss is good. Infantry. Um. You need already. You need logistics. Already. What is that? Valiance. Nice. So, how much can we actually recover here? Infrastructure reliability is way down. Unplanned offensives, huh? Born of the jungle, huh? Blizzard. Good. Good, we have another port. That's good. We'll throw in, like two more divisions here, maybe. Can you just go here and just beat the crap out of them. Nice. Now hold. Go here, beat the crap out of them. Good. Hold. Um, I don't want to make it any worse for us, so. Security report seventy-seven. Security developments over the previous months relating to the far south are detailed as follows. <clears throat> MWPK have adopted a new program in order to stand for election to the Morning Secretariat and National Plenum, and close the original copy of the latest national convention. The vast majority of the membership, estimated fifth six, have followed the party line and are thus keeping the legal means of protest. In response, a hardliner group has broken out, taking the old name of the MWPK. MP MSWPK comp continue, has changed and moreover in a confrontational nature of the organizing against the war. Large quantities of leaflets inciting desertion and disobedience or sabotage has been found across Care Force base. Debriefing of soldiers employed with the Care Force finds that most are aware of the leaflets and see recent report that uh, that increasing numbers are sympathizers. MP detachments have been given standing orders to seize all leaflets and arrest all agitators and to punish them to the fullest extent of military justice. No support from the MWPK has been given to these leaflets following their publication, but no condemnations made either. Yours truly, General Shield, Spruce Fire. We should find these guys and beat the crap out of them. They may have the manpower, but they don't have the resources like we do. Stream on fire coordination. Oh, I'll get some more of that too. Two more. 
I'm gonna build a base literally right here immediately. We only got all 4,000, which is actually not good enough yet. In this case, I want a single port here, too. Come on, god dang it. Give me a god dang port here. Seems like we're going to have to deal with this quite a bit. Oh. Hundreds of elected officials from the Realm and Harmony Party, from dozens of RAHP controlled dives, moralities, and county, township, and villager authorities, are rebelling against the increase in the Cure Force troop numbers exceeding its mandate. In a petition delivered, oh god dang it, uh, to the Premier, the RAHPH. RAPH uh, HP rebels condemn the unconstitutionality and potentially legality of the fake accompli the unsanctioned expansion of the Kirfor's mandate as ultra virus escalation of the far south intervention. The rebels surrender block national and provincial budgets and approval for military funding and appointments until Kirfor's troops and number of the south far south are reduced. With no cabinet or ministerial level RAHP delegates to join the revolt, the party's upper elections have not condemned it either. Premier Autumn Blaze has refused RA demands to enforce party discipline and has opened negotiations with the rebellion back benchers. The war is staring Kira apart. Oh crap. By over 35 battalions? Wow. Well, that's okay, so we can get rid of them. Including irregular infantry. So actually, you guys are irregulars. You guys are militia. There's a normal free set. Native levy. Expansion. Hmm. Guess we could use the airbase here too. Let's bomb the people here. I love bombing people. If that's the case, entrenchment gives us more attack and whatnot there. Field hospitals. I mean, it's not bad for HP. Recovery rate is pretty good too, though. Organization. River, jungle, fort attack, or just crap to more soft attack. I'm gonna go with these guys. It gives us more breakthrough, more organization, tons of soft attack. Oh, well, tons of defense, really. It also, move, move faster through everything here too. So that makes sense. If that's the case. Hey, lovey, welcome to the game. You guys are just militia. I don't know why we use you. And support companies. Are you kidding me? God dang it. It's because of the support companies, too. That's crap. Heavy in defense and jungles. So we do that, then what do we, what are we left with? It's still the same crap. If we remove this, because we have more than enough army XP at this point, it doesn't matter. There you go. There you go. Thank God. Jesus Christ, that's stupid. Early trucks are nice though. Early armored cars were needed years ago. Just like move out. I know, I understand the devs are trying to balance all this stuff out too, but still. Still not faulting the devs, it just it is a very tough thing to do here.
If you can move fast enough, you can probably take them all out, actually. Stable algorithms. Marines are nice. Um, what else do we have here that we can immediately help them out with? Anti air. Military police. Field hospitals. I don't want them in. Max factor. Let's see. Local power game? Sure. Do we have an airbase here? Definitely. Oh, it's all the way down there. I hate that so much. Go in and around as much as you possibly can because we still have decent ish supply ish for now. Getting the air spirit already, though. Come on. There you go. Okay, uh, we gotta have cast. This is ridiculous. Come on. We have to have cast now. Put them look at that. Nice. We sacrifice everything else when we get down here. Move bigger, faster, better. Nice. Right, what you want to go is here. Go in and around. Lock control mechanisms, good. Light edge we need right there, good. Some armored cars. Um, there you go. There you go. There you go. Doesn't matter. Armored cars. Yes, please. My God. Ball up tigers there. Oh. The purpose of the ritual carried on top of the last pier in the Golden City became all too clear and the city's dying priest had completed it. The skies above the city were right in the center, the city's ancient guardian, an entity only known as the Thunder Tiger, came crashing down in the storm of lightning visible from hundreds of miles away. The entire city built <clears throat> uh, from the magical gold, turned into one massive conductor, and the Kieran invaders were wiped out as they who dared to sell the garden deities pay, city paid the ultimate price. The sacred one is spoken. Look at this, nice. Hey, we do what we must. We get nuked along the way too, apparently. God dang it. Hey, we got him. That actually was by, my, way better than I thought it was. It was way better than last time, because I, I, I have experience with this. I've done this before. It's great. Mission complete. After the fall of Golden City and the subsequent destructions of Paws of the Thunder Tiger, Care Forest is having to report that the mission has been a complete success. General Core Rivers, uh, offensive, though racked of immense casualties when the uh, Tiger came down on the city, and has finally broken the enemy's will to fight. So though some tribes have melted away in the jungles, so continue fighting. Uh, the majority have either surrendered or all been but annihilated in the last stand of the city. Care for remain in the far south to conduct stabilization, peacekeeping missions, and an administrative and government functions will be given to the newly formed South Sea Enterprise Territory Copper Policy, funded by SIC, Kieran Holding Company, and the SSVC, as well as other Kieran corporations. The SSET will address the development of the far south, its markets and resources, lessening the financial and administrative burden of the innocent endeavor to the Kieran state. Though the situation escalated beyond what we'd hoped, we still stand victorious and finally help the locals leap towards the modern era like we did a corporate government for corporate state. Oh, well, maybe we should have done that one, but whatever. Fantastic, we did it. But I think that might just end it for us here. Look at that, Ruins of the Golden City. Sucks for you, boy. Uh, but we're done with all the focuses after this one, right? Oh, we got one more to do, technically. Yeah, but I think that's pretty much it for us. I think we finally done it. I know this is a very, very, very long episode, but I wanted to complete this campaign by this episode, so. Hey, we did fantastic in this campaign. I hope you enjoyed it, because it took us a while to get through it. Honestly, it took me more than a week to get through it, so. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of...
Ooh, we're down there too. Your day.